It's week 15 of the National Football League. And we'll get a look here at All-Pro Devontae Adams. And with him, any catch could be a big one. He's the NFL leader in touchdown receptions. It's the Jets and the Lions just ahead on EA Sports. That's an afternoon probably best suited for skating in Central Park, but we're across the river. We are in for a cold one at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. Today, we reach week 15, and we've got a good matchup in store between the Detroit Lions and the New York Jets. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. They've been playing their best football of the year, winners of four in a row. Meanwhile, for the Lions here, they're in a real group of late winners of five of their last six games. And the offense last week, they had things humming. If you're a defensive player, you may get overshadowed a little bit, but you're really buoyed by what your offense is doing. Two teams more than ready to get this one started. And we are underway from MetLife Stadium. This one taken just inside the 10. Oh, a good return up past the 30. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. Bringing him out is the future Hall of Famer of now his 18th NFL season, Aaron Rodgers. And if you go by the numbers, he's had a Pro Bowl type season. And maybe that's even selling him a little bit short. He's the NFL leader in touchdown passes to this point in the year. And with the end of the season not too far away, he's got his guys playing at a very high level. Now Rodgers on the bootleg. Steps away. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. The numbers for Zeke from last week well into the triple digits, and they'll take that every time out. What I loved was just how decisive he was running the football. Coaches like guys that go north and south. They don't like the east-west guys, the juking and the jiving. One foot in the ground and cut. On first down, Rodgers. And that's complete to Adams. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. The Jets at 11 and 2 now. And they've been playing their best football of the year, winners of four in a row. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. A first down carry by Elliott. He's got it to the 43 here. Now this defense for the Lions, they were very good a week ago in that win over Minnesota. There's a little bit of lightning talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. They'll try to run for it with Elliott. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. It's an eight-yard pickup that leads to a new set of downs. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and ten. Here's Rodgers to throw. Over the middle complete. It's Adams. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. Solid catch there for a man who's been so brilliant this year. Worth pointing out, as we were talking about earlier, there has never in the 60-year history of the award been a pass catcher, tight end or wide receiver, that has taken home the MVP trophy. And the best receivers I've talked with, they know that stat, and it drives them crazy because they understand that without a quarterback, they don't make the plays that they make. But they also don't feel like they get enough credit for bailing out something that throws the quarterback's man. Absolutely. Takes two to tango. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Now Elliott. And he'll be stopped just outside the 5 at the 6. The 6-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Again, it's Elliott. 
And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. From the five-yard line with his opening drive yield six. This is third and goal. Here's Elliott. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. We've now seen three consecutive one-yard gains, and it brings up fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Rodgers. Touchdown, Jets. Decision to go for it pays off with six points. Full connects on the extra point, and that makes the score seven nothing. So that one a 13 play drive in total, and it concludes with a touchdown reception by Darren Waller. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by Mr. Irrelevant in the 2022 draft, a guy with something to prove, Iowa State's career passing leader. And that's Brock Purdy. I'm not sure what you thought, but I thought it was appropriate when he walked into our meeting with his arm totally encased in ice. Because he threw five touchdown passes last week and won the NFC Offensive Player of the Week award. Yeah, but reading the paper this morning, and he said, gosh, I actually thought I should have got six or seven. But still, it was an amazing performance a week ago. Boy, I'll tell you what, if he thought he should have had six or seven, that's a guy that's an absolute perfectionist, not just greedy. On second and seven, Purdy. Flushed out right. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. Rookie quarterback, rookie running back. They team up there to pick up the first. Purdy to throw it on first down. That's caught. It's DeAndre Carter. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of football. The big foul out. And they move this all the way down to the nine. A big play that time. And a catch and run. 32 yards. After one, 7 0 on EA Sports. The Lions with the football here to begin the second quarter as they go to work on a first and goal. To Pierce, they set up the screen. And in for the Lions, touchdown. Damian Pierce, a nine yard touchdown grab. And the Lions are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Extra point by York is up and good. And we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a gain of eight, and it'll wind up moving the chains. In 
inside give to Elliott. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Play action. Now it's Rodgers. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. So the completion good for just three. And they're going to face a third down. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Rodgers going to try and throw on third down. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Working with a second and four. Go night, go night. They go to Elliott again. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Four yards, the pickup, first down. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. Calais Campbell on the stop. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the shotgun again to Elliott. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. Now this drive, they're two for two on third down conversions. But they need seven yards here. Here's Rodgers. Got a man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jets. DJ Moore, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Jets have taken the lead. And on this play, he just made a great route. The quarterback had to deliver it, sure, but a great route run there. And, Brandon, this is what the best receivers do. They work on their route running because it's one thing to have athletic ability, but to really get open, you have to set up defensive backs with different routes and be precise in your cuts. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taken in at the three. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. They are back over the 500 mark for the season. Got there with a win a week ago. Their second straight victory. Well, they've definitely gotten better as this season has gone along. And from what I can tell, they know their roles. Everyone understands how they fit offensively, defensively. And this team now has an identity. And they're playing to it and playing well. From the 29, Purdy. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. Call it a gain of a yard, and now it's the big three. Purdy from the gun. He'll get that one to Carter complete. And he is going to have a Lions first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. Swings this one out wide for Pierce. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Gets the dump off to Pierce. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Finding his big receiver, Patrick, over the middle. Touchdown! 
Tim Patrick as the first half is winding down. And the Lions have tied the ball game with a chance to take the lead into the locker room. CD for them. This has just been an offensive experience. And I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. The thing that they'll be looking at is a spot of the football, and uh, this is always such a tough one for officials to get exactly right. Not just because of how fast the game's going, but just trying to get the right sight line to the football, that's not always easy. We'll see what they decide here. So that challenge is a successful one. And the Lions quickly now are going to use the last of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Now Purdy. And that is caught. Touchdown, Detroit. Tim Patrick as the first half is winding down. And the Lions are an extra point away now from moving out in front. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron, had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And with only nine seconds remaining, with not much time, we'll see how they play this. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. A final shot before half for Rodgers. And he's caught downfield. It's Waller. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Lions taking the lead to the break. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We'll start up at Highmark Stadium, just outside of Buffalo, where it was the Bills who pick up the victory at home. A.J. Brown, well over a 100-yard receiving with three touchdown catches. From there, we head to the Big Easy to check on the Saints at home in the Superdome. And at this point, they trail the visiting Atlanta Falcons. Rondale Moore, a touchdown reception. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And in that one is the visiting Giants who have the lead. T.Y. Hilton, a touchdown reception. Time now for a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Lions. And their passing game has been the reason why they lead thus far. They've had great success moving the ball through two quarters of play. Meanwhile, for the Jets, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half, as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. Both teams making their final adjustments for the second half to come. And to bring the action your way, we go back to MetLife Stadium and Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner. Yeah, they went to the tunnel with a the lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. Looking for Rocket, and it's intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a jet touchdown. 
So this whole game gets flipped on its ear right there. The interception returned for a touchdown, and this lead changes hands here in the third quarter. And it certainly felt like this defense had a read on what was going on on the offensive side of the ball and said, let's cut down our coverage a little bit. Let's be in a position to make a play on the ball. And boy, that sure turned out well for them. The defense more than did its job. Now the offense is summoned onto the field as they'll go for two. So after the INT, it's Rodgers. And that is caught for the two points. And there's a quick momentum swing. INT return for a pick six, and then the two-point conversion good. And even if you're keeping your wits about you, you're thinking to yourself, okay, extra point block team going into the game now. All of a sudden you're hearing defense. Everyone's scrambling for their helmets and throwing down their cups of water. That's a great position for them to be in, trying to score against that team. A little bit disjointed. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to attack. Third down, it's Purdy. He's got his man, it's Pierce. And he goes out right around the 39. That'll go as a pickup of eight. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline. But what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Purdy's throw taken in here by Patrick. Working with second and five now. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Purdy looking to throw. Left side complete to lock it. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 44-yard line. A strong pickup of 11 keeps their drive alive. On first down, it's Purdy. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Patrick. Purdy now to throw off the play action. This is going to be caught along the sidelines. Probably shouldn't have been caught. He's going to lose yardage there. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. Looking for Rocket, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Trayvon Diggs. And the Jets are going to get it back here just past the 35. Well, it's not the first time we've seen him give one up here during his rookie season. And in this case, zone coverage forced the mistake. He's made some strides week to week in how he's handling the different type of coverages that he's seeing. But clearly, there's some growing still to do. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Good starting position for the Jets as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Rodgers now to throw. And he'll go underneath here to Elliott. And they're going to get this up to midfield. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. And Rodgers is going to go down. He's sacked. T.J. Watt, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Yeah, that's what we turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? 
And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. And as we check the next-gen stats, that play lasted just 2.7 seconds from beginning to end. Just not enough time to throw the football. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Pierce now up the middle. And this will wind up a Lions first down as the tackle made here at the 36. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And they'll go right back to Pierce. They juked him. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. And this offense on third down today, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. It's caught. Lock it. He's going to pick up the first down and then some. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A big play there on the catch and run. 33 yards. There's Purdy on first and 10. He finds his man complete. It's Carter. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. They'll run here with Pierce. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Purdy. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play call is thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. A lot of pressure here for Cade York. This a 27-yard attempt here. York able to send this one through, and that'll bring him back within four. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the end. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. Now, the previous drive they punted, but that was just the first time they've had to do so in this game. And when they turn on the game film, the coaches will rant about this, right? They'll say, oh, God, we got to move the ball, guys. We can't punt the ball away. But they'll have to keep smiles off their faces because that's the first time in the game they've had to do so. They've moved it quite well. They'll overall be happy with what they've seen. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 109 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ballgame. Up the middle, here's Elliott. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. Looking deep for Adams. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. 
when they've needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver. And as this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. What a difference a play makes. A huge step forward and now a small step back as he loses a yard or two. On second down, Elliott once more. Three yards on a pickup there, but they've only got it back to third and ten. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Well, it's a shuffle pass, and it's complete. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. On the sneak, Rodgers. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inch. And this time he breaks the plane. He's in for the touchdown. The sneak successful for the yard out. And the Jets are in the lead. And they're also closing in on a fifth straight victory. What a huge touchdown that was. Obviously, here in the late stages of the fourth quarter as they try to put this one away. And Brandon, when they watch the film after this week, They'll be very proud of every rep if they close this game out. Just a few steps remaining. They can't relax just yet. Now Folk for the extra point. He missed one earlier, remember, but this time he gets it to go. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by the quarterback sneak for six. Take it in at the three. And able to get this out to the 25. So now the Lions down by 11. A minute 54 on the clock. A crushing loss to their playoff chances on the horizon, barring a huge turnaround here, starting with first and ten. Purdy to throw. That's complete to Pierce. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and that'll bring up second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. I mean, this is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time is going to run off the clock. Oh, wide open, complete. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Here's Purdy. Finding the open man, and that's Tim Patrick. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. This is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Trayvon Diggs. And the Jets are going to get the football here as he gets this up past the 20-yard line. He's had a fantastic rookie season, made a lot of lovely throws, but that wasn't one of them. Well, we got to give him one, don't we? I mean, with the year he's having, a lot easier for he and his teammates to accept that throw because for the most part, what they've seen, it's been pretty sensational. And New York set to take the field. 
And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. Little clock management 101. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. And meanwhile, Rodgers' throw complete here to Waller. Finding space at the 40. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Rodgers will take a knee here, and that should be all she wrote. This was a joy to watch. Entertaining for us. Not so much to the team who had a halftime. And now is leaving here, knowing that they let a win slip through their fingers. Tough one for them to carry on. So for the Jets, they continue to roll as the win gets them to 12-2 and two on the year. And they'll get another home date next week as the Jaguars will come to town. Meanwhile, for Detroit, their playoff hopes take a hit as they drop to 7-7. Seven and seven. And they'll be on the road next week for a matchup with the Carolina Panthers.